my name is Al, our little star nerd, and welcome to the April vlog. Before we get started, thank you so much to my patrons for sponsoring this video. Your names are on screen. I've been having such a good time with Patreon this year. I've struggled with it in the past to get it to where I want it to be, but I really feel like I found the sweet spot. I'm having so much fun. I've been loving doing the exclusive video every month. I get to be more experimental and have more fun with it. And I get so excited every time I get the like postcard and the sticker in the mail to see how they turn out and to send them out. It's just, I'm having so much fun with it. So if you want to support me and you want to get some like goodies too, definitely check that out. The link will be down below. Thank you to my patrons. Now let's, let's get into it. I'm still feeling like really sick. I'm super uh, congested still. I finished my sinus infection medica antibiotics and after they finished, I immediately started feeling bad again. So, excuse me, I'm so sorry. I still sound disgusting and I feel disgusting. I'm like sweating, it's awful. Okay, so um, I really need to like not totally redo my room, but I've started like, <sighs> every time I reorganize my art space, um, I do, I'm not gonna make a full like art studio reorganization video. It's not that drastic. But every time I do it, it works for about six months to a year. I'm still loving this setup, but in that time that it's been working, I've been collecting more and more stuff. Personal stuff, stuff to go on my walls, art supplies. And I have outgrown what I have here. I think, frankly, that this is as good as it's ever gonna get. I can't really fit more storage. I think what I'm gonna have to do is reorganize it and just make it work. But I think like I've just grown out of a corner of my bedroom. You know what I mean? I just have to wait until one day I can have a full room or space dedicated to an art studio. I think this is as good as it's gonna get for now. But I do need to reorganize. Um, and that's, I have a couple things to help with that, hopefully. The other day, uh, I was just packing orders for my shop and my mom walked in and I guess she was bored and she was like, oh, do you, do you need help? And I was like, oh yeah, sure. Like I'll, you know, collect the stuff and you just wrap them up in the tissue paper and, and package them. So she helped. Then like a few weeks later, a package comes and she's like, oh good, I've been waiting for this. Open it up, it's a present for you. And I was like, what? A gift? That's so like surprise, like random. And in it were these uh, tape dispensers. She was like, I, when I was packaging your orders, the washi tape was so annoying to deal with. So I thought I would get you these and make it easier, which was just so sweet, so nice. And they're so cute and they stack. They look so good. Half of them, the, the washi tape isn't sticking because I've just kind of thrown it on there. <laughs> but like, I just think it looks so cute. I love them. The only problem is, is I don't have anywhere to put them on my desk. So I decided like what I'm gonna try to do is like shove all this down and get rid of the prints. But I didn't know what I was gonna do with the prints. So I went onto Facebook Marketplace and I got this very ugly <laughs> uh, file box for eight bucks. It's super ugly, it's very big, it's very bulky. I have no idea where I'm gonna put it. Uh, it'll definitely take some adjusting to figure out the process of like what it's, you know, packaging orders, but I think it's fine. One, this is portable, so I can just take my prints to the market that's happening this weekend. Uh, in this, I don't have to worry about packaging them up. I can bring everything and then like decide what I want to display there instead of having to like plan ahead. Also, it's not that much of a loss because this system, one, is ugly. <laughs> it doesn't look, it's just manila envelopes. And two, it doesn't work super well. I've already outgrown it, first of all. Every single like slot is doubled up. There's multiple manila envelopes in each slot, so it's like hard to get to, hard to sort through. You can't really see what you're going for, especially because I always have stuff stacked here so I can't see the names of things. And then like things are constantly like falling out, falling off. It's on the edge of my desk. It's just not super well done. Like it's not super effective. So even I would have kept it. Uh, I never would have changed it without being prompted to. It definitely worked well enough, but like I'm not upset about losing this system because it's not that good. So even if the file box isn't a good system, it can't be worse than this. So I'm gonna move all of the prints into here. And then you see this very large stack of stuff. This is stuff that has been uh, sent to me, commissions that I'm working on, stickers, swatch papers, stuff that I have been putting off dealing with that I really need to deal with. There's also a uh, print that I have, have been falling down. It's I know it's time to change what's on my walls when everything starts falling off. So I've gotten a bunch of new stuff. I'm gonna like take some stuff down, switch it out with new stuff, stuff like that. I'm gonna redo the desktop just a little bit and hopefully get rid of some of the, I have like stuff kind of piled in corners of my room. Hopefully I'll get rid of some of that. I'm not gonna take you through all of it, but I'll probably take you through some of it. Like look at this cool thing that I got. And this one, look at that. I want these on my wall. <laughs> I have stickers that were sent to me that need to be like put away, paperwork. Ugh, I got stuff to do. For right now, I'm just gonna move the prints really fast and do my desktop so I can get figure out where I'm gonna put this file box and then I'll put off the other stuff a little bit longer. But let's go.
these. I'm sure I can find a use for them, but I don't know what yet. So cute, little smiley faces. Yeah, okay. Now I just need to figure out where the hell that file box is gonna go. Okay, I just got a message from Jess saying that she got my package. I've been holding onto hers to open it when we have them at the same time. So I'm finally opening it. I'm so excited. She has this cute little note. I don't think I gave her a note, which is so dumb. I don't know why. Normally I do that, but this is so sweet. I, I'm trying to be so careful with the packaging. I love, I hate like destroying packaging. Oh wait, there's also something on the back. Ah, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, look how cute. Oh my gosh. That is so sweet. No way. Not the patches. Oh, I already, I see fish. I'm already excited. Oh, that is beautiful. Oh, she's sending me pictures. Wow. Girl, where do you get your printing done? Oh my gosh, a little capybara. Oh my gosh. These are all so gorgeous. Thank you so much, Jess. This is so sweet and I'm so, I'm so thrilled. So this piece is the Patreon postcard for April. I've had this idea of a bunny, like, like a really long bodied hair type of bunny for a while. Like I've had this idea in my head, this image in my head. It's like a imagery that I think is used a lot in kind of like darker or more edgy art. And I really like it. I really vibe with it. I love that aesthetic. And I don't know why, for some reason, that's just been like on my mind a lot lately. I think it's because I see a lot of rabbits in my neighborhood. And I don't know why, but I really can't bring myself to make really dark art, especially involving animals. Cause like kind of the image that I'm picturing is like, you know, the very classic like rabbit with a knife, right? <laughs> I think it's kind of silly that I can't make that kind of, it makes me sad, first of all, but I used to make a lot of darker art that was, but that was back when I was in a much darker place mentally, you know? And I think I just can't escape that association. I just feel like that darker art is so indicative of something bad for me. And so I don't want to make it, even though I would literally just be making it for the, for the aesthetics of it, you know? I love like kind of dark, creepy, macabre aesthetics and I would like to make that kind of art, but for some reason I can't bring myself to do it. Anyways, I like this idea of a skinny lanky rabbit and it's spring, so I thought, you know, actually a rabbit is perfect. It's very appropriate for the time. I found a few different references that I was using for this piece. One was kind of more for the pose, one was more for the coloring. And I try to kind of stylize it a little bit without going too crazy. I used gouache whenever I do fur. I like to use gouache. I do use other things, like especially like for commissions, but gouache really just, it feels like the right move, you know? It's like the right medium. It's so easy to layer with. You can get that texture, like those lines with the fur. I just love it for animals and stuff. It's so superb. But yeah, I try to keep this piece somewhat within the original vision I had, but still springy to match the month, but also not too Easter-y or themed or gimmicky. And I like it. I like how it turned out. I, I think it's a cute sketchbook piece too. And I think I got that right balance of like what I was looking for. Speaking of the sketchbook, God, let me tell you, first of all, first of all, I definitely really like it. I've been at, you know, I've done different mediums in it and I definitely like the sketchbook. It's been fun and cool to like mix up the kind of sketchbook that I'm working in and to do something different. And I really like the performance of the paper. I will say, however, that the size of it is definitely too small for my comfort zone. If I were someone who used multiple sketchbooks at once, which like I try and I'm very bad at it, um, but I can definitely see having this as like a travel sketchbook if that were something that I kept. But for my general work, I'm definitely finding myself feeling a little too cramped and a bit like I just don't, I don't have room for my ideas, but it's not too bad that I can't work in it. So that's fine. 
I definitely didn't do as much good work in the sketchbook this month as I would have liked. There are some things I really like in there, don't get me wrong, but I think it's just so hard for me to like be satisfied with my sketchbooks at all because truthfully, I don't even actually know what I want from them. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's okay, you know, I'm learning and as long as I'm still keeping my sketchbooks, like to me, that's what matters. Whether they're good, bad, ugly, fast, slow, filled or not, like as long as I keep using them, right? Like, I'm not really worried about whether or not I'm satisfied with them because at the end of the day, like, it's just a sketchbook. So I'm not too upset about it, but yeah, it's whatever. It's just a sketchbook. So another thing I did this month was go to Creator Clash. I literally just went to see Jarvis Johnson. Uh, he's the only person I even vaguely knew. It was kind of lame. Like the announcers, they were big names. Never heard him speak once. Um, it was a really weird event. Oh yeah, I, I saw Jake Doolittle and Anna Marie Fortino. So I was kind of like stuck in them a little bit. It was like a fun, cool thing. Just an absolutely goofy event. Absolutely goofy. Um, had a good time, would not go again. <laughs> Hi friends, it is April 19th and I was in the middle of, I just filmed the Patreon exclusive video. If you wanna know what it was about, I tier ranked my own art. It was a lot of fun. So if you're interested in seeing that, you can go check it out on my Patreon. But anyways, I wanted, while I had all my filming stuff set up, I actually wanted to talk to you guys because I have a question for you. First of all, first of all, before I say that, let me, you just saw some clips, sorry, I'm in my creaky chair. You just saw some clips of me at the Fine Art Center that I do my open studio figure drawing at, which let me show you what I drew. We did one long three hour pose and I left early because I literally forgot what time it ended at, <laughs> but I was also done. I was already finished. I had been starting to just basically doodle I'd run out of stuff to do, so. That's what I drew, I had a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> next week, I'm going to actually be monitoring the studio so that I had to go early last time to make sure I knew what I was doing. I'm absolutely terrified and I'm gonna try to vlog it. I'm really, like not all of it because obviously there's gonna be a nude model there, but I'm really gonna try to film some of it. Um, we'll see. It's a lot of really old people, like really old, really nice old people. Um, so I don't think they'll like care, but we'll see. Uh, but it was really cute. So at one point I was listening to music and because they're all old, none of them like, do that kind of stuff. So I was listening to music and the guy who was monitoring, Lewis, he's very nice. Um, he's one of my faves. He was like, if anyone wants to play music, and we were next to each other, and he's kind of like, if anyone wants to play music, they can. And no one else had any way to play music. So I was like, uh, I mean, I guess I can play my music if no one minds. And they were like, yeah, go ahead, play your music. So I have a 60s mix that I always listen to, like when, I'm, when I go to these things. That's just what I'm into right now. I'm into 60s and 70s and I'm, Still love 50s, but right now it's 60s, 70s. So I have a 60s, like 70s mix and I was listening to that. And so I was like, oh, okay, but like, thank God, like this is the crowd for this, you know what I mean? So I played that, but I like, I just got the vibe that like maybe everyone hated it. And so after a few sessions, like we take these breaks, I stopped playing it just in case everyone hated it. And I could be like, oops, I forgot. And we get like two minutes into drawing and like Lewis is like, would you kindly turn your music back on? And I was like, ah. And I was, I was like, thank God they enjoy it. And then they all started commenting like, oh yeah, your playlist is so good. And I was, just, it was my main character moment. It was my main character, not like other girls moment. They were all like, how does a young woman like you start listening to music like this? And I was like, first of all, what do you mean? Classics and oldies have always been a thing. Like, shut up. But also I was very, I was absolutely willing to like play into the like, oh yeah, I'm just like not like other girls. It was fun. It was a fun main character moment for me. But now I am very paranoid that they're going to expect that every time. And I only have like a few playlists and they're all kind of the same songs. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm gonna work on a couple of different playlists just in case they ask me to play my music again. So we're not listening to the same songs over and over. Okay, anyways, I let me ask you what I came here to ask you. Okay, so. 
in my shop, which if you've already ordered pins from my shop, I'm sorry, they're gonna come in the plastic bags. From the manufacturer, GSJJ, they come in these little plastic bags. And I know it's pretty typical for artists to package pins, enamel pins, with a backing card and then in a plastic or glassine bag. And objectively, I agree that that is cuter. Like that is, if, you know, that that's, a cuter, better way to package them. But I cannot help but, and this is not like a diss, I'm not trying to say anyone else is wasteful, I'm saying by my, like for me, it would be wasteful. I feel like it's super wasteful of both, like it comes in plastic. It's, it's wasteful of time, money, and resources. It comes in, like I could just mail it or sell it like this, or I could throw this plastic away, print and buy backing cards, pin them all into the backing cards, and then buy more plastic to wrap it in. And then I know, because like this is what I do with the things that I get, both the backing card and the plastic will just be thrown away. So it's like, do I stick with the plastic that's like, that it already came with, or do I go out and buy more resources that will be thrown away? You know what I mean? Um, But if like you guys, so I wanna know your opinion. Like, do I package it cutely or do I leave it like this? Because I can't help but feel like, this is lazy and ugly in comparison because it's like such the standard that artists do that. Like, I wanna know if you guys see this versus a cutely packaged one on a table next to each other, like is the cute packaging what makes or breaks your purchase? Is that something that's like a genuine deal breaker for you that like for my markets and for the shop, like would that help me genuinely? Or do you guys not care? So I wanna know your opinion. Does that change your mind about buying stuff? Because like, <laughs> I don't wanna waste the, the money, the time to package all of that. And I don't wanna make extra plastic waste. Like it just feels so dumb. Not, again, I, it sounds like I'm calling other people dumb. I'm not, cause I love the way it looks. I agree, like I want it. I think it's cute, but like for me. I don't want to spend that money and waste that time. But like I said, if you guys are the kind, if, if you're going to tell me that like, oh no, if you do that, I will buy it. And if you don't, I won't buy it. Like if enough people say that, then I, I agree that it's worth it. But just like, let me know your thoughts. Cause I have been like really tied up about it and really confused and I would love some input so I don't have to make this decision by myself. Um, yeah, I don't want to talk too long. Cause I feel like there's going to be plenty of me sitting and talking in this vlog. So let me know what you think. Talk to you later. So this is a picture I took at Turpin Springs. I was standing in the shade and I looked at the building across the street and I just loved the colors, but specifically I loved the shadows of the power lines on the building. So I took a photo and then actually painted it, which is awesome. Sometimes I'll take the photo or like remark on something that I find inspiring and then I never actually follow through on it. So I'm just glad that I actually did it and I did it well, you know, I didn't just like half-ass it. Although while I love how it turned out, Oh my God, trying to do the power lines. I probably should have just used a micron or a pen or something because oh my God, like I messed them up so bad and it kind of ruins it. It's fine, it's not a big deal. It's just a sketchbook piece, but it does bug me. <laughs> Anyways, I had a great time in Turpin Springs. I was actually going to meet a fellow artist online, Creatively Chrissy, who you will meet later. 
But she reached out to me and was like, hey, I'm nearby if you like want to meet. And I was like, you know what, why not? So we met up there and had a great time. There happened to be like a really, really big like art market thing going on, which made traffic absolutely terrifying. I've never been to Turpin Springs when it's busy. I only go on like weekdays to avoid tourists. That it was like a Sunday and it was so busy. But anyways, we got some good food and this huge bird like walked right up to our table. We were eating outside. That's literally one of my favorite things about Florida, honestly. Like I love being able to sit outside five feet from the water and watch like boats and dolphins and birds go by. I had such a good time. Yeah, um, so I'm glad to like have this painting, you know, to remind me of that really nice day. <laughs> And I have to know what kind of session we're doing today. Okay, so the open figure just finished. This is Chrissy. Hi. Um, we met yesterday and she's very nice. Did you oh, like- Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you for coming. So did you like the open, open studio? Yes, I will definitely be coming again Yay. because it's a great way to like practice. Like if you guys can do it too, definitely do it. Yes, if you have one near you. Mm -hmm. Cause this is like my first time. I've been here a few times, but it's like such a different like kind of drawing experience. Agreed, because you have a live model, which is very fun, very fun, very different, very different. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so it was my it was my first time monitoring. Everyone was really nice, um, and I did manage to vlog a little bit. So and Chrissy is part of the reason that I had the confidence. So thank you. Yes, Chrissy. I will be there waving the flag, like <laughs> my personal cheerleader. <laughs> yeah, go exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, bye. bye. <laughs> I oh god.
I look so bad. I'm super sunburned and I took a two hour nap today and I woke up looking greasy as hell. <laughs> it's the 25th and I'm ending the vlog here. But let me let me say a few things. First of all, I'm in a reading slump. Um, I think I forgot to like give you a reading recap last time. And like I, I've read a few other things besides what I'm gonna show you, but I have not read that many things. I just can't get into it. I'm, I'm waiting for like a good book to like bring me back. I did finally read I Am Malala. This is an amazing read. Obviously like Malala is just so amazing. Uh, but there's specifically, like I don't have much to say because I, I just like this book, but I do have one, <laughs> two lines I want to read to you. The way this book is written, it gives you absolute whiplash. It's insane. It's crazy. Uh, it's really well written. It's witty. It's funny, but like sometimes it's traumatizing. <laughs> okay, so this is about halfway through the book. Start of chapter nine starts like this with one of the most chilling sentences I've ever read. I was 10 when the Taliban came to our valley. Okay. Motiba and I had been reading the Twilight books and longed to be vampires. I feel like I can't make a joke because of how serious that first sentence is, but like the whiplash. I had to share that with you because that was literally, I read that and it took me, I had like a double take and then I had to like read it out loud to my family because I was like, this is the funniest and craziest and weirdest thing I've ever read. Um, I'm currently reading this book and I love the cover. This is one of the most gorgeous covers I've ever seen. So I have on thrift books, like my shopping list and my like wish list in thrift books is what I consider to be my TBR. I'm like, I don't remember every book I've put on there. I assume that if I put it there, it's because I want to read it and I've like double checked that I want to read it. So I got this from thrift books thought i assume that it must be a sapphic book it's i don't think it is it, it's very straight which is really bringing down my vibe currently i'm gonna read it anyways because i do really like the world it's like a, a futuristic like robot filled world and i really like the concept but i don't know it's not at all giving what i thought it was gonna give which is always such a disappointment the only other books of note actually the only other one book of note that i've read that like is worth sharing, but it's put away and I'm too lazy to go get it, is Witches of Ash and Ruin by E. Latimer. I give it a four out of five and I feel like I would like it better if I were not in a reading slump, right? I feel like it was the exact same book as These Witches Don't Burn, which I read before, but I liked this version better. It was really interesting. It was really fun. But yeah, I just like couldn't get into it in the way that I think I could have otherwise. I, otherwise, I think that's pretty much it for this month. I had a really good month. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling happy, feeling fulfilled. I feel like I'm getting to do a lot of stuff and that's awesome. I think I have two more markets planned, one for May 13th and one for June at some point, I think. So stuff to look forward to. I've got work to do. Um, I still have to send out all the Patreon rewards because the stickers are taking forever. It's fine. Speaking of, here are the Patreon originals. I think they're so cute. I did a painting. I went, I met uh, Chrissy who you saw in the previous clip. We went to Tarpon Springs together and I took this picture and then I painted it and I really, really liked the way it looked. And I was like liking the watercolor vibe. So I did these. Love it. Anyways, that's about it. Um, thank you so much for joining me this month. I hope you had a great month. I hope you're ready for the next one. <laughs> um, yeah, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, the whole shebang. I guess I'll see you next time. So go water your plants, watch a movie and go do some art. Bye. <laughs> see you later.